In this video, I'm bringing you an exciting episode on tool storage on the walls using French cleats. The plan is to build a French cleats based system on that empty wall there and make it look much more interesting like this. So let's get on with the build. The first course of action is to cut some battens and that's going to be made from 2x4s and I'm going to use my flip miter saw station for that. Before I go any further, let me try and explain what I'm trying to do with the SketchUp animation. Essentially, that's my blank wall and these battens which I cut are going to go onto that wall. On top of the battens, there will be a half an inch MDF sheet and on that MDF sheet, the actual French cleat systems will be screwed in. In my case, the cleats are going to be made by 2x4s and as you can see over here, it's going to be cut at 45 degrees. The bottom part of it is going to be screwed onto the wall and the top part is what gets attached to your storage system. And now let's come back to the battens. These battens are going to be secured on the wall using anchor bolts. So for that I'm going to use this fastener bit to take off around half an inch on the wood. And then I'll use a 10mm drill which is the width of the actual bolt itself to go directly through the 2x4. So using the spree drill holes on the battens, I used an SDS drill and drilled straight through the wood onto the wall. And I used a 10mm bit for that. Once I got that, I hammered in the anchor bolt and then whacked it all in. And then I used a ratchet spanner to tighten it all up. And with that, all the five battens are now secured onto the wall. And each batten is held by three separate anchor bolts which are spaced across it. Next I used an angle grinder and grinded off the excess bolt so that there's nothing sticking out of it. And for the backing I'm going to reuse this old wardrobe doors which I had salvaged for some time. They are like half an inch or so and I guess it's MDF. So these are going to get screwed onto the battens. Now it's going to be held by three screws at the top and three at the bottom and all the screws are going to get driven directly into the battens. And this should ensure that all the load is spread across the five battens with a total of around 30 screws holding it together. And now for the actual cleats. So as mentioned before, these are just going to be 2x4s. My case is going to be around 2.15 meters wide, which is roughly a little over seven feet. Now, since I got 2x4s from different batches, my very first step is to plane them down all to the same thickness. After this, on the table saw, I just took a little bit from the edges from both the sides. Then I tilted the blade to 45 degrees and did some test cuts. And then with that I nailed down the distance from the fence to the blade which approximately in my case comes to around 2.15 centimeters. And with that I started cutting the cleats. Now back at the garage I gave it a quick sand at 80 grit paper. This was done to just smoothen down the edges and then I used some paste wax to give it a really smoother finish. Now back on the miter saw I cut all the cleats to length and over here I'm just marking positions to pre-drill the hole. From the edge of the board I marked 5 cm as a spacing and drove a temporary screw in. This is so that I could get the cleats aligned to start building up the system. And with the help of some clamps I got it all level. and then draw screws in through the board into the batten. Now that we got the first row in place, it's time to build the system up. It always makes sense to start from the bottom and then build your way up. In this case, I'm going to have 130mm spacing between the second cleat and the first cleat. The process of building it is kind of similar. That is, you drive in one screw in the middle, level it up and then start screwing in from one end to the other. And with that, all the cleats are now in place. Now we'll start building the actual storage boxes and all that stuff. So I'll be reusing a lot of materials that I already have. Now Chris Billow has asked an interesting question on how you decide the box structures and what goes where. So my thought process was to write it down all in an Excel sheet and list out all the tools that you have. In column C, I also highlight if you need to store any accessories with the actual tools itself. 
column D is kind of the shape or the model of the box whether you want a box or whether if you want a shelf or whether you want a dedicated system on its own and the next column indicates whether you need a handle for it so that you can carry it down to your project and the last column is just some general comments where I've written down sources of inspiration or the design that I should do to build it up. With the lack of finding a better word, I'm just going to call them storage designs. In this first one, I'm going to make a compartment that's going to store three of my tools, multi-tool, the angle grinder and the electric file, along with their accessories. The first step in this process is to cut down plywood into sheets and then on the table saw cut them all to the actual width. The boxes are going to be held together using dados and these are going to be cut with this router bit which is around 19mm. Now the plywood is 18mm thick but they fit perfectly well as you see here. I'm going to use my router sled to cut the dados and I did that using two passes and after cutting the dados I ripped it into two equal parts on the table saw. With all the pieces cut to size, I started assembling it. It's a pretty straightforward setup. That is glue, spread the glue around, countersink the holes with a drill, and then drive in the screws. Each panel gets two screws on the side, and I repeated it on both the sides as well. Here you can see that the dados fit in perfectly well. Now it's trying to assemble the back panel. So these are scraps or other offcuts of plywood. Every one of them gets pre-drilled, countersunk and the screws are driven in. Now for the actual cleat, this is the remaining piece from the 2x4 and they just get screwed in from the top. Now it's time to fix it on the French cleat and this is how it looks. All right, let's talk about storage design number two. Now, this is for my reciprocating saw, jigsaw, and a few other stuff like that. All the pieces have been cut like before. That is, the dados have been cut on the router, and all the pieces have been trimmed on the table saw as well. Now, the only difference in this one is that it's got a center shelf in between to hold it. And that's what you see me marking over here and chopping it on the miter saw. The assembly is straightforward, glue, white, uh, pre-drill the holes, screw it in, fix a backing plate, and screw the cleat in. Now for screwing the cleat in, I pre-drilled it using a Fosnub bit, and then use 50mm screws and just draw it in. And the cleats are hung onto the frame at 5 different positions. And that should be pretty strong enough. The next storage unit is going to be for my sanders. So I got an orbital sander, random orbital sander and all the accessory sanding discs. So the same format, dados with the router and then just screw the whole lot in. Here I'm just reusing some old piece of plywood as backing for it. And everything gets pre-drilled, countersunk and the screws are driven in. And there's also space on the top to put some other tools like this hand drills and all that. Next I cut a few sheets of plywood and that's just because I was running out of my scrap pieces of plywood which are usable. The next storage shelf is going to be for my half inch and quarter inch routers and its accessories. In this, I'm going to show the data cutting process in a bit more detail. So I first take a piece of plywood and mark the place where I need the dados to be cut. And then using the router sled, I place it on top 
clamp it up tightly on both the sides and take a light pass from left to right. After this, I adjust the stop and decrease the depth by a little bit more and take the second pass. And then I rough run using the sanding block and the dados are done. And now I repeat the process down the panel. So once I get this big sheet, the next step is to take that to the table saw and cut them into equal parts. A quick sanding and then it's time to pre-drill it. So for that I mark positions using a combination square and I drill from the groove side to the outside so that you know where the screw holes has to be. And then it's similar to what we have done before. That is you pre-drill it again so that there's a pre-drill hole on the other piece of the plywood and then just drive the screw in. My half inch router comes with this ginormous straight edge guide and I figured it's a good place to hang it on the side. And now it's time to put the cleats in. After doing a dry run of all the accessories, I just kept all the small pieces, the router collets, the spanners, the straight edge guides and everything on the side and then use some IKEA hooks to just tow them away. And then I just place it all back on the French cleat system. Storage design file is going to be for my drills, my impact driver and for my nail gun, plus some brads and all that stuff. This build is going to be pretty simple, it's got a front, a back, two triangle sides and a small lip in the front as well. The assembly is again straightforward, glue, spray drill, countersink and then just screw it all in. And now the cleats are attached to it. There's a few small things which I couldn't record, which are adding that angle triangle in between and the small lip for the nail gun so that it holds it vertically. With all the bigger boxes now being built, it's trying to flush trim the edges. So with a flush trim bit, I went over all the back side of all the other boxes and then with this quarter inch router, I gave it a small round over as well so that it's good to the touch and there's no splinters on it. So I went over all the exterior side as well as on the shelf part. After this, I cleared out my sander and sanded it down with 80 grit. While I was with the sander, I also sanded the entire French cleat again cleaned it up and vacuumed it in as well. The next one is going to be for my track saw. This is again a simple build, that is you got a bottom, a back and two sides and they are all joined together with the same format, that is glue, pre-drill, countersink and screws. A quick round over and sanding and it's done. Now for the tracks on my track saw, I just drilled a hole with a metal bit and then drove a screw into one of the joists and just hung it up there. The next storage unit is for my old circular saw. So I chopped the pieces using the track saw and made a 45 degree bevel over here and then chopped it in with the 45 degrees on the track saw. I must say it's a bit nerve wracking to cut it on a track saw and I, if I have to do it again, I'd probably use the table saw. 
Anyway, once I got all the different pieces cut, I used my router again to cut dados. And to accommodate the safety guard of the circular saw, I again used a router to cut out that dado. All the pieces are now glued, pre-drilled, countersunk and screwed in. I cut off the excess on the table saw and then attached the cleats onto it. Now even though it looks nice and I have seen a whole lot of YouTubers use this kind of a system, for me personally I don't use a circular saw that often now since I got the track saw. So this is version 2 of the circular saw stand and this basically what I've done is I've taken 4 pieces of deck boards, chopped them into pieces and made a big chunk like a butcher block. I used an old 40 grit sandpaper and glued it at the bottom. Now when you push it with a finger you can see that it's not that easy to move. If required I can always screw it down from underneath as well. And now for some clamp storage design. So the first one is going to be for my F clamps which are 300mm long. It's got three parts to it. The front part, the backing plate and the top long strip on which you actually put your F clamps on. The long strips are designed in such a way that you can actually carry the entire cleat all together, take that to your workpiece, do your project and then you can put it back in on the cleats again. I like the design a lot so I made two of them. The next one is for my 450mm F clamps. They are similar in design, the only additional thing is I accounted for the bevel of the F clamp. So I transferred the bevel onto the miter saw and cut the bottom piece in that angle. So that makes it like a sort of like a compound angle. And then I glued and screwed it tight. And it's got the same principle, that is the front long part is actually services like a handle as well. So you can put your clamps on it, put it back on the cleat, take it to your project along with the whole unit, work on it and then you can put it back on the cleats again. The next set of clamp storage is for my Irving quick release clamp. Again this has got only like three components to it. The first piece is a 12 mm double. And now what you're seeing is a block which holds the double in place. So you drill a 12mm hole in an angle to it. And there's also a backing plate with a 12mm hole which is like semi recessed So after applying a lot of glue, you just squeeze the double back into it. And then you drive in a screw from the back and another screw from the side. And that's about it. The good thing about this design is that it's pretty simple and you can just slide your quick releases just on top of it. Next in the design are shelves. So I basically got two kind of shelves in this whole project. One of them is a hinged one which you're seeing over here and another one is just a flat one. Now the idea of the hinged one is to store smaller objects like drill bits and all other things which are lying all around the garage. So with the hinge you get a positive stop and you have all the bits lying inside it. So basically the whole thing is assembled straightforward. The only tricky thing is getting the hinges in place and securing the magnetic catch as well. 
To secure the magnetic catch, I just used a smaller 10 mm screws. So now if you want to grab a particular kind of a drill bit, you just open it, reach it, use it and just put it back. Now for some reason, I didn't like the exposed edges of this. So I had a few off cuts of 2x4s, which I cut into thin strips of 18mm and I just screwed that here. And now it looks a lot better. And now for the open shelf, so it's just got a back a bottom and two sides. So this shelf is predominantly going to be used to hold other bits which comes in its own boxes and cases. So I have a few mallets and hammers lying around. So the plan is to just create grooves on a plywood and just add that onto the cleat. Now the same design I had used it last year on my garden shed organization to store some other tools. So basically you use a table saw and cut the grooves in it. And then using a Fosma bit, you just join the cuts effectively making a big U-shaped groove on which the handles will slide in. The next one is going to be a small shelf for my chisels and rasps. So I place all the chisels and rasps next to each other and then measure the width of their necks and then using an appropriate Forstner bit which ranges from 15mm all the way to 30mm I drilled all the holes in it. And then it's just a question of attaching the cleats and I apply a thin edge banding all around it and the job's done. And last but not the least, a small space to keep all my squares and other measuring tools. What I've done over here is I just marked all the cutouts and created small templates out of it. For the combination square, I cut a dado on the table saw where the curve of the blade is the same width as the combination square. Then I used an off cut of pallet and ran it through my planer. Now this stand is going to be my next video. It's going to be a flip planer which goes straight underneath this bench. All these cutouts are spaced, glued and then brad nailed in. And then this assembly is just screwed onto the wall. Now this essentially is not a French cleat system, but I thought since I built it, I'll just add that in this video. And with that, this massive wall is done. 
Now before you run off to the next video or do something else, I would like to say if you like this video, please consider giving me a like. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And I would really be interested to listen to your thoughts about this whole build. If there is something which you would like me to add or something which was done wrong or something which could have been made even better, please let me know down below. Alright, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.